Coming up right now, a special edition of the Best of Animal Outtakes. You'll meet a special group of therapy dogs called the Guardian Angels. And we'll meet some mounted patrol horses and find out how they keep us safe. And feral hogs, they have become a big problem and despite the best of efforts, they are out of control. All that and more right now on Animal Outtakes. We hope you're having a safe and joyous Thanksgiving weekend. And we have a lot to be thankful for here on Animal Outtakes, especially the love and the companionship of our animal friends. This week, we're taking a look back at some of the best of Animal Outtakes. We start off with a group of highly trained professionals, therapy dogs, from a dedicated group appropriately called Guardian Angels. Good boy! Very this good! This is not your typical obedience oh, class. Uh, Ooh, excuse me. These dogs are training for oh, a higher oh, purpose. Oh. They're training to be heroes. So it's always good to have them used to, because people are going to not see them because they're supposed to be invisible. When I pair one of these dogs with a person, it's an amazing transformation that takes place in their life. Not only does their whole life change, but in many cases, we've had dogs that have actually saved their lives. Gerald Borden is the founder and executive director of the nonprofit group Guardian Angels Medical Service Dogs. Since 2010, her organization has helped pair hundreds of dogs with people with disabilities and special needs, improving their lives. The process starts with a puppy and a simple command. This is Whiskey. He's one of our 13-week-old um, puppies, and he's already started his training. So he has to say hello. They uh, don't run right out and get right into work mode when they're that age. And that's okay, because we make everything fun. He is a German Shepherd. He said, very good, sit. Want to show him how we do paws? Want to do paws? One of the things that we teach all of our dogs, all the service, different service dog skills that we teach, the one thing that is consistent is teaching them to do a command we call paws, where they put their front feet up on a chair or a couch or the end of the bed to make it simple for the disabled recipient to put their vest on and off. Whiskey, here, ready paws? Good paws, very good, very good. Such a good puppy. That simple command is the first of many that will come in handy for the person who will end up paired with one of these dogs. All right, go close the door. Hey, close the door. There, that's with gusto. That was with more gusto. Light. Good. And we use touch lamps, so it's easier for them. Make it brighter. Good. Good job. Once trained, Carol's staff helps pair these dogs with people who desperately need them. Like Jake Little, a teenager whose genetic disorder keeps him in a wheelchair. He was paired with Jubilee just a month ago. Jake, would you say that Jubilee is your best friend? Yeah. Yeah? Easily. Can you remember what your life was like before her? I mean, I didn't have the confidence to use my wheelchair. And now? Well, when I get to use my wheelchair, I always have the feeling that someone's... Hey, would you here to help me and stuff. And I can't even imagine what it will be like because she's not even fully trained yet. She'll learn to pull my wheelchair and like give me independence and retrieve stuff with me, which would be really nice. We can tell from the moment she, you know, laid her eyes on Jake that her purpose was set. You know, she, when she puts on her vest, she is so excited and so full of life and she just wants to serve. Casey Kelly's dog Nitro has been by Very her side good. for over Yay. a year now, helping awesome. her overcome her battle with bipolar disorder and anxiety. Prior to getting Nitro, I wouldn't leave the house at all. What does Nitro do for you in a day's time? He is with me all the time and if he catches that I'm getting nervous or fixing to have a panic attack, he can draw my attention away. So he anticipates. He can tell the changes in my behavior and of my different sense I make, and he will get my attention to focus on him instead of everything around me that's stressing me out. Your panic attacks 
since nitro has been in your life have decreased? Oh yeah, I used to have these almost daily and now it's maybe once a month and they're not nearly as severe. Emma, you have Bo as your best friend. Yes. What was life before him? Every day was a battle. It was, it was terrifying. It was just in a, living in a state of total fear all the time. So what do you do now in a day's time with Bo? We go to school together. We're attending an art class now. Um, we go to the mall. We just got back from Disney a week of vacation. <laughs> um, he's been with me to the hospital even during those not so fun times. And he's always there, always by my side, ready to help. Is he always looking for you? Yeah. He, I can't go anywhere without him. If you him. turn a corner, is he right there? Yep. Yeah. He's right by my side. So why, Carol? Why are you so passionate about this? And what made you do this? When you see the results, when you see people's lives change, they can do things that they couldn't do. It's amazing. Truly an inspirational story. We are certainly thankful for the work those dogs do. And now we turn to another story of animals helping people, mounted patrol horses, and the important work that they do. It's a busy day on Siesta Key Beach in Sarasota, Florida, but while the crowds swell, there's a team of officers on patrol. In fact, they're drawing quite a crowd themselves. These horses are part of the Sheriff's Mounted Patrol Unit. Their supervisor, Sergeant Chris Laster, says having these animals on patrol has a real impact on the community. It really is a great bridge between the public and law enforcement because everybody likes a horse. So it doesn't matter what demographic, what background, people are going to come out and talk to us. Now, how many horses do you have here? Right now we have 10 horses and uh, we have eight riders. Tell us where you get the horses. Okay, well, we've, we've had horses from all over the place. Most of them have been locally, though. Many of the horses used in the unit have been donated. Although Sergeant Laster says they look for some specific qualities in their mounts. What type of horse makes the cut? Well, what we look for is what we would consider a big, bold bay and boy. <laughs> uh, basically, you know, all of our horses, as you'll see when you look through the barn, are, are bay or black, which means they're black. Uh, obviously or bay means they're brown with a black mane and tail and we do that for uniformity so that we we all look alike it looks more impressive it looks sharper and it helps us get our job done through the fact that we look more professional so people are more apt to uh, do what we ask them to do but for the most part what we're looking for is the a horse with a natural calm disposition and we really look for a dressage background because that's really the origins of dressage is in the respect that it was used for warfare. So a lot of the maneuvers that we use for police work, moving off the leg and side passing and leg yields, is what we use today. For the deputies on this specialized unit, their day starts long before they climb on the backs of their trusty steeds. As you know, we've got about three hours worth of work um, prior to actually hitting the street or leave, leaving the barn. Normally we'll come in, we'll feed, and as they're eating, we'll start getting our tack and things ready, get that high shined and polished and, and prepared. Then we'll wash the horses and when they're drying, we'll get ourselves ready, then we'll tack and then we'll usually get out on the street, trailer out to wherever we're going. We do all kinds of different things. We'll do anything from neighborhoods, parks, beaches. While on patrol, the deputies work in pairs. And with these large horses, seeing them on the streets can be rather daunting. Well, you know, the biggest thing is we work in pairs. And the great thing about a horse is it's actually the least aggressive way to make arrests and to interact with the public because they are animal. Most people really like animals. But the other thing is because they are so big, all of our horses are 16 and a half, 17 hands, sometimes 18 hands. And because of that, they're very intimidating. And so that actually is what helps us, helps keep us safe. Because when you're looking at a 10 foot officer, uh, it can be intimidating. But again, that helps us and uh, get our job done. And these guys are a big part of that. They are also protected by some laws, are they not? Yeah, they are protected by laws. You know, if anybody harasses, purposely harasses or strikes or something like that to a police horse, you know, it's a misdemeanor and if they injure them, it's a felony. Do you think that they have on some level any idea of the importance that they serve with you? You know, I, I know that uh, horses are made to work. Uh, it, it's really a good, that's what they were designed for. 
and I, I think they enjoy their job. They like a lot of attention. When we're out, we get a lot of people that uh, come up to us, talk to us, pet the horses. I mean, that's what we're there for. Nobody goes out and pets a patrol car. We give our special thanks to the Mounted Patrol team for sharing their story. Next, a very unique dog breed, the Chinese Crested. Now they may not have much hair, but they have plenty of personality. Don't go away, we'll be right back. People have asked me what it'll cost to restore all the corals back the way they remember. But I have to ask them, what will it cost if we don't do anything? Welcome back, and we hope that you are enjoying this special edition of the Best of Animal Outtakes. We've done stories about lots of dogs, but none is more unique than the Chinese Crested. And while they may lack hair, they make up for it with lots of love and attention. When Sarah Perkins Cortese goes out with her dog Kismet, she knows they are bound to meet some new friends. Well, Kismet, do you have the same hairstylist I do, huh? <laughs> yeah? Tell us about this beautiful creature. Kismet is a Chinese crested hairless, and he's just, he's just an incredible boy. He's just perfect, isn't he? He is. He makes people smile, and that's really one of the things we want to do. You see, Kismet is a Chinese crested dog, a practically hairless breed known for their tufts of fur on their legs and head. What is the allure with this beautiful dog? Well, you know, I think I first learned about this dog um, from the Ugliest Dog Contest. Oh. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, really? And what it is is hairless dogs also have the gene that they have no teeth or less teeth. Um, there's something about this dog that I just fell in love with. Despite having little to no hair for grooming, these dogs do require some extra care when it comes to their skin. It's not a lot of work, but you need to shampoo them regularly. I use coconut oil on his skin because they can get skin irritants, the grass, allergies. The best thing I can recommend is just sunscreen if you're out in the sun or clothes, but to bathe and put oil on him. Now he can be out Absolutely. In, in, the, in the weather. Absolutely. He normally will wear a shirt when I take him out. Oh, I don't okay. like, to, I brought a shirt with him, but he normally, if he's gonna be in the sun for a long walk, I'll put a light little shirt on him. Despite their name, it's believed the Chinese Crested actually originated on a different continent. What is the history of a Chinese Crested as you know it? Well, you know, it's not totally defined. Um, what they believe is that they came from the African hairless dog, and then the Chinese um, bred them down to be smaller. I think in his case, he might be more of the African. <laughs> <laughs> he got some of the larger genes, right. that's for sure, but you know what? He's solid. He is. He's got some muscles. We're not talking any fat here, pal. While Kismet is hairless, there are some dogs in the breed born with full coats. In the litter, there can be powder puffs, which are fully coated, um, long-haired dogs along with the hairless. I just feel very blessed. Kismet came into my life at a really rough time, and he is the most affectionate dog. He loves to go under the covers and cuddle with me. And he's just, he's a very sensitive soul. Still ahead, sustainable food. We'll take you inside the kitchen to see how efforts to control an invasive species includes eating them. That and more when we return. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. 
Studies show that Predoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Predoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. Our next story is about sustainable food, and it's a growing trend. And we learned about some pretty unique and delicious food sources we had never heard of. In the Farm to Fork movement, scientists at Moat Marine Laboratory have the farm part down with their aquaculture park. But it takes restaurants and chefs to offer up the forks, so to speak. Ed, one of the words that we continue to hear, sustainable, sustainable, sure. sustainable. Sure. What does that really mean to us? Well, I think, uh, you know, as it relates to food, it's probably the most important movement that I've seen in the 36 years that I've been in business because of what it encompasses. It not only encompasses uh, local, uh, it, it, you know, it's not only about that we want to know where our food comes from now and we want to know ideally who makes our food and how they produce the food, how they grow the food. When we do that locally in a sustainable way, then that provides a great quality product. Ed Childs owns three restaurants that all have incorporated sustainable products on their menu. One that is particularly exciting is the Sunray clam. Uh, this is a clam that's always been here. Uh, you always see them when you go down to the be uh, beach and you walk around because the predators love them. You see the shells. After 12 years of research and development, scientists have finally been able to bring the Sunray clam to commercial production, much to the delight of shellfish lovers. Uh, they are sweet like conch. Uh, the way w these have been done, and they're the, one of the easiest things in the world to cook. You get a hot pan, you put just a touch of, just a touch of olive oil in it. Uh, you put those clams in there in that hot pan and let them sizzle. Hit them with a little bit of white wine and chicken stock. They open beautifully, like a butterfly, because they're oblong. And it, that dish cooks in about three minutes. Oh, it's divine. Mm. It is divine. Mm. And sweet. Mm, mm, mm. Can I do this? Yeah. Uh, because I'm doing what it. What we call sopping in the <laughs> South. That's the best part. A little shell, get the juice. Mm. Unbelievably. Isn't that nice? This is, this is heaven. Another exciting development has been the use of invasive species on the menu. One in particular that is up and coming in the culinary world is the lionfish. Tell us about these lionfish. They are invasive. They are problems. They are. But according to you, they are great eating. They are fantastic eating. They're a very, very mild fish. Um, their flesh is white. It's, it's almost like a hogfish, if you're familiar with that. Um, they are very delicate and tender. They kind of have a maybe a flounder flavor. Other than the fact that they have venomous spines, Chef Eric Walker says the lionfish is a great fish to work with and delicious on the plate. Should I? Yeah, absolutely. Don't wait for me. Oh my, this is very tasty. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. While beautiful to look at, the lionfish are insatiable predators, eating up any kind of fish they come across. And they are heavy predators and they end up denuding the reefs and eating a lot of the other fish. Uh, so they're looking for ways to try to control this. Uh, and one of the ways that they've, the best way they find, if you can't beat them, eat them. Uh, <laughs> And so now they're really just trying to find the, 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 the efficient ways to harvest them. But there's a problem with making the lionfish as prominent as, say, the grouper or snapper. They've been very popular, but they're very expensive. Right now the fillets are about $18 a pound. Really? Yeah, and that's super high. So if we can get that price down, if we can get more efficient ways for people to, uh, to harvest them, uh, then I'm hoping that we can see more restaurants put this on the menu because for the consumer, it's a heck of a fish. Another invasive species that's made it from menace to menu is the wild boar. 
I think this is about taking lemons, the exotic <laughs> in space, in invasive species, and making limoncella. Really? I mean, this, these, and we serve the wild pig in all three of the restaurants, but this is a superior, nutty, uh, really, really got a rich, nice flavor to it. Well, you take that exotic species and you control it. We don't have to take them all out, but we can get the numbers in balance and we can do that and provide a really uh, top-notch gourmet meat. Now, Ed, I'm not so sure about this one because I know what they are. Yep. <laughs> but, but, all right. Oh, my goodness. I just forgot what it really was. <laughs> it's outstanding. Is that good? Mm hmm oh, That's mm -hmm. really good. So I toast you, Ed. Thank you so much for having us today. What a pleasure. It's been wonderful. Thanks for your interest. Thank you. I truly love that story, and what a great job they're doing with sustainable food sources. Up next, feral pigs. They've become a serious threat to the ecosystem, and they're very hard to control. Don't go away. Attention, this is an important message for anyone who has taken Xarelto or Pradaxa. If you or a loved one took the blood thinner medication Xarelto or Pradaxa and was then hospitalized for internal bleeding, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Xarelto and Pradaxa have been linked to serious, even fatal internal bleeding. If you suffered a stroke, heart attack, or serious internal bleeding, or if a loved one died after taking Xarelto or Pradaxa, call us now. Our network of attorneys have years of experience fighting the big pharmaceutical companies and is ready to fight for you. Potential claims are being reviewed for users of Xarelto or Pradaxa who have suffered severe bleeding or hemorrhaging, stroke, or even death. Our network of experienced attorneys is ready to fight for you. You won't pay a thing unless your case is settled. Call today for a free confidential consultation. Don't fight this alone. Please call 800-928-6604. That is 800-928-6604. Hi, I'm Joan London with A Place for Mom. Over the years, we've helped thousands of families find senior care, and today's senior living communities have never been better. With amazing amenities like movie theaters, exercise rooms and swimming pools, public cafes, bars and bistros, even pet care services. And nobody understands your options like the advisors at A Place for Mom. These are local expert advisors that will partner with you to find the perfect place and determine the right level of care, whether that's just a helping hand or full-time memory care. Best of all, it's a free service. Call today, a place for mom. You know your family, we know senior living. Together, we'll make the right choice. Call a place for mom right now to get our free ebook on financing senior care, as well as a free referral for senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-290-0352 that's 1-800-290-0352. We just heard about a nuisance under the sea, the lionfish, and now a growing problem on land, feral hogs. They're rarely seen. Yeah, it looks like they plowed it up. Yeah. But the damage left behind by wild pigs is definitely an eyesore. Um, it will look like somebody came in and completely dug up everything. I mean, you'll have holes like six inches deep out there where they have totally used their snouts to push the sod aside to get to what they want. This is a hog print right here. Um, due to the size of this print, I would guesstimate this hog here over 100 pounds. These feral hogs have been known to root up neighborhoods, taking manicured lawns and turning them into yeah. tilled messes. Well, looks like we got some fresh rooting here. Take a look at that. Now these hogs are coming all the way up to these houses now. They're getting braver and braver. The wild boars aren't even native to this country. They were brought over by early settlers. Since then, they've run amok, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. This, once you get back to where hogs live, every inch of soil, if you were to walk back here and hike, is gonna be destroyed. Everything's destroyed, every inch of your woods. And for most of Florida backcountry, this is what you see in Mayaka, Arcadia, and most of Florida. Once you get off trail, this is what you're going to find. So what are they digging for anyway? Well, they're looking for their next meal, be it plants or insects. When they're back here, we're under oak trees right now. They're eating acorns. 
they're rooting for acorns. Once they start to dwindle down that food supply, they go out into the open areas and that's where they're looking for the grubs and stuff like that. And when they're not out digging for dinner, they spend their days trying to stay cool. Jaws. Yep, this, this is what you call a hog wallow. And this is what the hogs will create and lay low to stay cool, usually in the hotter times of the year, most of the year. Wildlife trappers have their work cut out for them, as these animals are showing up in more and more residential areas, much in part to the building boom. As land is being developed, it is driving them out of their natural habitats. So even though the homes and land is being developed, it's still, the pigs have nowhere to go. So they're looking and searching for food high and low because their territory has been taken over. I would say within the last, they've always been a problem, but I would say within the last three years with residential has exploded. Um, I used to trap full time on ranches, uh, forestry departments and stuff like that. Now I pretty much, I stay busy doing residential. Uh, I got a trap right here. Uh, they have not hit the corn last night that I put out. The most humane way to get rid of feral hogs is to trap them. So uh, this is the hog trap, a design that I did myself. I mean, all traps are pretty basic. So I'll have a cable run into a, the door. It comes over here, it runs straight down, nothing bothers it. But when the hogs are in here and they're rooting, the door shuts and the game's over. But these animals are very intelligent and will sometimes catch on to the game. They're very smart. Uh, hogs are smarter than dogs. Uh, their sense of smell is crazy. They learn very, very quickly. Uh, right now, I think we do have what we call trap smart hogs. They've seen a trap before. They know what's going on. Uh, so the next step here will be snares. When it comes to preventing some of the destruction from wild pigs, the easiest thing to do is to treat your lawn. Get your yard treated for grubs and worms and stuff like that. I'm not saying it's going to stop the problem. They might hit your yard once or twice and leave. If they're finding food there, they're going to come back every night, every night, every night. It's going to get bigger and bigger and become a problem. There is no official count on how many wild pigs are roaming around out there, but it's believed that the population is continuing to grow. I trapped, honestly don't know. It would be well beyond hundreds, I would think. I've lost count a long time ago. Um, Do you think it's making a difference? I think it's might have helped that much. <laughs> well, that wraps it up for this week. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you've learned a thing or two and had some fun along the way. I'm Marsha Panucci, and we'll see you again next week on Animal Outtakes. Okay, Marsha, pretend like you're washing your Mercedes, okay? <laughs> there you go. Okay. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. 
ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. ABC 7, your official Florida lottery station for the Sun Coast.